Behold the mighty crate BC 3112. A friend of mine got this uh, on you know, basically free with another app that he was trading for, and he asked me to take a look and see what he got. So let's go into this 90s gem. Ah, uh, it's one of those with like 37 screws holding the rear panel on and the uh, chassis is attached to the rear panel. So let me catch back up with you in a minute. I've got to put my screwdriver to work. Well, it has an authentic vintage club, all tube, crate amplifier, St. Louis, Missouri, USA, E12, 8 ohm. Looks like it's made by Eminence. Standard belt and Accutronics. Maybe facing the wrong way as far as noise goes, we'll find out. And a lot of cobwebs. I'll deal with those in a little bit. None of the egg sacs there look like they're currently loaded, so we should be okay. Let me move all this out of the way and get the uh, big piece of wood off this chassis. All right, one missing knob, and the uh, pots have these same tiny plastic shafts that you find on Ampegs of the same era, and some PVs, no surprise there. Ampeg and Crate were both St. Louis music productions at the time. Let's just kind of set everything flat-ish. So when we do power it up, we don't have any nasty surprises. Reverb off, master for the channel down. Reverb off on both channels, so separate reverb stuff. And that one feels very loose. Let me take a look at that. Yeah, I can turn that nut with my fingers. So later all the nuts will get an adjustment. Let's take a look at other things first. Uh, effects loop switch, uh, foot switch, or maybe it's a stereo effects loop. We'll find out, it could be all on one TRS. Hopefully it's not the case. Input jack, quad of EL84s, four preamp tubes, pretty stock stuff. Let's look inside. The Vintage Club series tend to be pretty good amps, uh, you know, within a budget. A lot of nice Wema caps. I'm not a big fan of the pots they used. That could be said of several companies in this price range, both at the time and now. They have the same Sam Waugh brand caps that many Marshalls do. And these all have some doming. I can't tell quite yet if that doming is caused by this little plastic disc getting hot and then doming up, or whether something is bulging on the cap. But it feels like this one might be really bulging, like there's electrolytic leaking here. Same for this one. So I'm going to get an exacto and cut these open and see, because worse comes to worse, just a piece of black plastic that I've disturbed but it could also tell us something major is wrong with these old caps and samois were never great to begin with. It's a shame. Most of the other, most of the rest of the construction is actually pretty good for a um, single-sided PCB. You know, it's not the highest quality, but they, they tend to be good. Well, good news for the owner. Once I removed those plastic disc caps, I could see that neither cap had actually was actually coming out. These cross hatches, these, these are so they can vent. If there's a problem, it'll spill all its guts there, and it can push that plastic dome up. In this case, they, they've just been, it's been, it gets warm inside these amps, and those plastic domes just uh, uh, moved over the years. I see one thing that might be an issue. Let me show you that. I'm not sure if it really shows up on the camera, but there's some white stuff here that might be coming out of this uh, positive end of this cathode bypass cap. But it could also just be white stuff on the board because it's all in this area that kind of accumulated there. So I'm going to give that a quick little cleaning. Now I expect this thing probably is, is likely to have one or more iffy solder joints by this point. And just because those filter caps aren't actually physically showing huge sides of leakage does not mean that they're actually any good. And this cap could be bad, or this cap could be good. That's not going to affect the uh, performance of the amp too terribly much, I don't think. It looks like I could clean the, the jacks and pots, of course. And the uh, pot hardware is not tight. But it looks like uh, we could um, power this up. And one other thing of interest, earlier I said, huh, a single jack labeled a effects loop. It looks like it is a stereo jack send and return on the same jack with a stereo plug, and someone has soldered this together so when nothing's inserted, it's uh, doing that. Maybe the, uh, 
the shunts became defective or just dirty and this was someone's solution rather than pulling the board and changing the jack. If the owner doesn't care about the effects loop, which is probably not that great in this app, to be honest, that could stay. You know, that's, that makes sense on some levels. So I'm going to hook this up to my cab and power it on with the current limiter and see what sounds we get and if anything wants to go boom. Right before I power it on, I want to mention something earlier. I said, hey, there's a missing knob. I didn't remember seeing it missing before, but in the moment I didn't stop. I found it on the floor. This is very common with Ampeg and Crate knobs from this era. Uh, they're plastic, painted with a thin coating of metal, and the inside is a press-on to the, to the uh, shaft, which has the knurling, and it just breaks. Uh, the plastic breaks. So the fix for that typically, if you can't get another one of these or don't want another plastic one, you know, don't want to order anything, is you can super glue that together and then put some tape on, uh, like masking tape on the uh, plastic shaft and then push it back on. And usually it stays well enough. Hopefully that'll be the case here. Anyway, I've got it all plugged in and ready to power on and test. I see little glowy lights in the EL84s. Let's take it out of standby. And a pretty good hum there. Very dirty pots. Let me power this off. And I want to make sure that all of these screws holding the board in place are tight. Some of these screws are ground connections, which make the ground for the circuit to the chassis. So let me uh, tighten those up and see if that makes any difference. All right, they weren't all as tight as they possibly could be. So let's try that again. And we get the guitar while it warms back up and uh, see behind all the noise and crackle from probably just dirty pots, maybe a couple of bad solder joints, what the core sound is. And I think I see a little bit of flex in this board over the years where the preamp tubes have been pushed in and out. There's not a screw over there. It's not one missing, it just wasn't there to begin with. <laughs> So the sound, aside from that hum, is quite nice. Hmm. Well, one of the hardest things I've encountered to photograph for these videos are bad solder joints sometimes, particularly ones in shadow like this, because what the eye can see, the camera doesn't quite see as well because there's so much reflection. But I see quite a few iffy and uh, possibly broken solder joints here. I think one you guys can see is right here on that one. Uh, given that flex that we just heard when I pressed on the board, I'm pretty sure we just have a couple of bad solder joints in an otherwise healthy amp. Um, that hum came and went as the tube was moved. Um, if it was a major problem in the amp, it would be constant. And the sound, other than that, was quite good and quite promising. So I think it's quite worthwhile. Let me go ahead and pull this board out and see what we see. All right, so I've got the knobs off. And I, I, I promise I don't do any setup work. I didn't come in here and loosen these just to look like I'm doing something on camera, but every one of these nuts can be turned by, by my fingers, and that should never be the case. I should never be able to, well, that one's tight, so good. That one on that one reverb connection is tight. I should never be able to turn a nut that's properly tight and just with my fingers like that. Every time that happens, all the mechanical stress of using the pot that's supposed to be borne by that pot to chassis connection is just borne by a solder joint that was never designed for that. Let this be a pretty good demonstration. With all the nuts off, this is just flapping. I don't want to get to it to get damaged in the meantime from moving things around. So it's going to get a bit of blue painter's tape. Love this stuff. 
doesn't leave a residue. I can hit it on my jeans a few times and take off any excess adhesive. So it really, really won't leave any residue, but it will keep that from flapping out and getting damaged. Now I'm gonna remove these four screws so I can take these EL84 retainers out. Now let me show you why a lot of techs have a soft spot in their heart for this era of Ampeg and Crate. Once the nuts are off the pots and jacks on the front and four screws are removed from this board, the whole thing comes out and lifts up with all the wires still attached. Ta-da! I didn't have to undo 37 things or desolder things or have things under other layers, Mesa. So let's see what's going on with this board now. Oh yeah, lots of broken solder joints all throughout here. On the, mostly on the tubes and some adjacent components. So it won't take long to reflow this and it will be infinitely better. And I see some iffy solder joints on the pots as well. And let me show you some others. All right, broken joints on the input jack. Same kind of thing over at the foot switch jack. And uh, some broken connections at the uh, effects loop jack as well, which is probably why someone went on top and did that wire, which is kind of sort of a fix, not the best fix. Anyway, uh, some people are now gonna be say saying, what do you expect from a PCB amp, blah, 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 blah. This thing's held up really well. The only flaw is that the hardware was allowed to get loose, so all these solder joints went under a lot of stress. If all the hardware had been checked twice a year, this amp may be still in the factory fresh condition. You know, there's trade-offs to everything. Take good care of your, of your gear. You can make even an inexpensive 90s crate amp last a long time. So let me heat up the soldering iron and make this thing happy again. All right, got it all recapped. And aside from needing to clean some pots still, though it's not too bad now, uh, it sounded quite nice on both channels. It's a little bit of a hum. These caps are old. The output tubes have not been changed in a while. It could be uh, the output tubes just aren't closely matched. It could be the old caps. That's going to depend on the owner. I'll talk to him. He may be happy just to have this thing usable. If I go to the dirty channel and I go to the bridge pickup, this is single coils on a strat. You just had a whole bunch of 60 cycle hum and a little bit of added noise because I'm sitting with the pickups a foot and a half from the power transformer. So, you know, this was not a demonstration of listen how awesome this amp sounds, but it's so much healthier now. And, uh... <laughs> We still have some microphonic preamp tubes, but we're not having the cutout issue that we did have, but the owner can change preamp tubes. That's coming through. The, actually, the output tubes are pretty microphonic, so I'll talk to him if he wants to, to get new tubes for this. I would hold off on recapping until after we get new output tubes if he's going down that path, just because that's uh, a probable cause of that hum, just imbalance in the output, and there's no need to recap if everything's okay. Uh, so the next things I need to do, I need to sort through all these knobs. Some of them are not broken. Some of them are, these two seem okay. The broken ones, like this one, I'm gonna get in there with a little bit of a super glue to help that keep from spreading open again. And then uh, whichever knobs end up needing it, 
I'll put a little bit of masking tape on the volume pots, but I'm going to hold off on doing all that until I speak to the owner because he may want it recapped. He may say, oh my God, that, that thing is so promising. There's only, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine uh, caps that would definitely need to be changed out. The cathode bypass caps tend to last a lot longer than the bigger ones. You know, spend as little or as much on these as you like. This is a, a, you know, it is a crate vintage club series from the 90s. It is a good amp for what it is, but it is what it is, and the market is what it is. But just making sure that all the connections work made a dramatic difference. So this is a good place to stop. I think the owner will be very happy with this.